Okay, shall we get started? Thanks, thanks again very much for attending US COTS in the first place. Thanks for coming to this closing session. The closing session is titled Takeaway Thoughts on Expanding Opportunities. And we're gonna start like we did pretty early on in the opening session. We're gonna start with some polls. So get ready to answer some poll questions. So if you wanna advance the slide, Kelly, I think I can launch the poll which asks, what book did Kelly lead a discussion of with her undergraduate research students and colleagues last summer? So there's the poll question. We'll see how closely you are paying attention a couple of days ago. All right, I'm gonna end the polling and the modal answer with 75% of you answering that answer is the correct answer, data feminism. And of course we had the two authors of data feminism as our keynote speakers yesterday. So let's go to the next poll question on the slides, please. If you were at the awards session or if you read the daily email, who's the winner of the George Cobb Lifetime Achievement Award in Statistics Education? But I am gonna end the polling. Even though there's variability in the answers, you're all correct. How can that happen? Because all the answers are Jessica Hutz, who is, who is the well-deserving recipient of this award at the awards session yesterday. Let's go to the next poll question. If Kelly can advance the slide and Bob can launch it, I'll just ramble, which is what I do best. If you are watching the award-winning music video yesterday, you can answer what kinds of pets showed up during the awards session. Some of them in the video itself, some of them more serendipitously in the lap of one of the winners. You can vote for more than one this time. And you did well again. The correct answers are cat and bunny. 76% of you said cat, 68% of you said a bunny. It's certainly possible there was a dog or a snake or a bird or a llama and I just missed it. But the cat and the bunny are what I know. Oh, I didn't share the results, sorry, there's the results. So thanks for participating in the polls. We do have more polls coming later in this session. So be on the ball for some poll questions that Kelly's gonna ask toward the end. But if we go to the next slide, please. Kelly and I wanna extend lots of thanks to the members of our program committee who have done a lot of work behind the scenes. Some of it in front of the scenes, you've probably seen some program committee members in the breakout sessions, especially this week. We greatly appreciate all the work they did and all the feedback they gave and the help they've been in preparing for the conference as well as during the conference itself. We thought the best way we can thank them sincerely for the work they did is to ask them to do some more work. And so that's what we've done. We've asked the members of the program committee to be the speakers in this closing session. And we are very gratified that all the members of the program committee agreed to speak in this closing session. Because everybody agreed, we had to reduce their time restriction even further. We've asked them to give one to two minute presentations. We're also limiting them to one slide each. And their task, their assignment, is to present their takeaway thoughts on this conference and on the theme of expanding opportunities. We have the speakers and the members of the program committee listed on this next slide. But we're very grateful for everyone on the program committee, and we look forward to their takeaway messages from this conference and this conference theme. So we'll start with Amy Hogan, who teaches at Brooklyn Technical High School. Hi, everybody from New York City. I've learned and felt so much this week, so it was really great being with everybody. Uh, my first point here is a lot of people talked a little bit about preventing gatekeeping, enhancing access, uh, encouraging the narrative that stats is worthy, and building in teaching practices that encourage all. Uh, when we teach to the tales, we benefit the entire distribution. Uh, the second point was that uh, teachers and students should, should be allowed to be completely themselves uh, with the, all of their multiple roles in their lives giving students choices, giving them voice at the same time. Uh, and then the third point is it's always the little things. We heard a lot about 
you know, creating a, a syllabus and course assignments that are, um, you know, encouraging and and give students ways to be successful. Um, but there are little things, and I saw this over the course of the week, like if you have an acronym, define what the acronym means, because that can be uh, exclusive for people who uh, either are English language learners or just new to new to the, the field. But even those of us that have been doing it for 25 years sometimes forget what those acronyms are. Um, and then the last point is sort of what we're here for, which is you know community building, creating a supportive community, cooperation, mentoring. Um, and just a reminder that uh, many of us are on Twitter. I'm a little stats and we can continue that community uh, even beyond the conference. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amy. Be sure to use the cause Slack as well as a way to keep the community communicating. <laughs> Next up, we have Camille Fairborn from Michigan State University. Hi everyone, and thank you for this opportunity. Um, I love us cots and even online, I have still loved this year's US cots. I love hearing about what other educators are doing and having my mind, my network of friends and my teaching expanded, which happens for me each time I come. But the truth is US cots is also overwhelming. So while I love learning about all the amazing things that are being done in the field of statistics education, it can make me feel like I have to go back home and change everything. And it's easy to feel like what I'm doing can never be enough. So after drinking from the fire hose that is a wonderful conference like this, I like to remind myself of a metaphor that I use when describing the difference between a population standard deviation and a sample standard deviation. I tell my students it's like taking the balloon that is sigma and adding just one more puff of air, inflating it just a tiny bit to get S. I want to give myself permission and you all as well to take from this conference and add to your teaching just a little puff of air. Perhaps you've made just one new contact who may turn into a lifelong mentor and good friend. Maybe you found a new technology to use with your students or a new idea for a lecture example or lab activity. Or you may have seen something revolutionary that will take years of effort to realize in your own teaching. Each of these has happened to me over my years at US COTS and today, this week as well. If you're lucky, maybe you've gained all of this and a little bit more. But all those changes don't have to happen in just one day or one semester or one academic year. I'm going to remember, and I hope you will as well, that whatever steps you can take to make your teaching better, more equitable, whether they are big or small, they are, they are worthwhile and they are enough. Thank you all for being here and sharing this week with me and with each other. Thanks very much, Camille. Our next uh, presenter is Eric Reyes from Rose Hallman Institute of Technology. That was 20 seconds, about 20 seconds of silence. And if you're like me, you could feel your anxiety rising, that need to like fill the void and fill the silence. And often I think that's how I've always envisioned expansion, taking opportunities to extend our barriers to fill the empty space. And I was humbled this week as presenter after presenter redefined expansion for me. They reminded me that first of all, that space is not empty, it's full often with those who have been marginalized by society. And so instead of expanding out and filling an empty space, they redefined expansion to be adopting a position of listening, learning, and being shaped by that very space. And in that process, we're no longer extending our barriers, we're letting them fall down and we're inviting that space in. And sitting through that silence can be really uncomfortable, but if we're willing to push through our discomfort, we might find that our educational spaces and our educational opportunities are completely transformed into environments where everyone can thrive. Thanks very much, Eric. Next speaker is Judith Kanner from California State University, Monterey Bay. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to say, the biggest thing I've learned uh, this week has been that our pasts are not generalizable. We are all here today. Um, we've all survived our experiences, uh, whether positive or negative, um, in becoming statistics and data science educators. 
And so as we think about the next generation of statisticians and data scientists that we are raising up in our courses, uh, we really need to remember that their current state where we are, what they're experiencing is not what we experienced even 10 years ago. The world that they are being trained in is very different than the world we were trained in. And so with that, as we uh, look forward to expand opportunities for our students, uh, just reminding ourselves of that, having compassion um, and having consideration as we really rethink everything, including things like how we sequence our courses, the content we include, how we assess, um, how we grade. But in all of that, just as the previous speaker said, finding that one thing that we can focus on that we can do well and we can move forward with, and there will always be time um, to continue to expand opportunities for ourselves and our students. Thanks very much, Judith. Next up is Kelly Spoon from San Diego Mesa College. Thanks, Alan. So I came to US COTS with some clear goals. I definitely take uh, Camille's suggestion to heart. I wanted, I came here thinking I want to learn more about how to support my students in their statistical writing and communication skills. And I wanted to learn a little bit more about standards based grading. And through some excellent breakout sessions and conversations with colleagues, especially in the X bar, um, I feel like I met those goals. But my main takeaway was actually something separate. Um, and that was from Maria Tackett's um, five minute presentation on that opening session. Um, her takeaway from her TAP class of treating all of our students as if they're gonna be professionals regardless of their goals. Cause I see how that ties in to my goals of the conference of helping them become better statistical writers and communicators. Um, and it comes along with culture responsive teaching and having high expectations for our students. And I felt like I, I saw this again and again in talks, whether it was Jessica Utz's talk on data ethics or um, even the panel, so many people in that panel, so many educators saying we needed to show students what a statistician does. Um, I just, I'm now going back to my course and throwing out the one thing and I wanna like redesign everything around this idea of how can I make my assessments, my assignments, all of these things geared towards treating my students as if they're gonna become statisticians in the field. So that, is my one takeaway and how I'm ignoring Camille's suggestion, even though that's, I, I believe in it. Thanks very much, Kelly. If you haven't noticed the ordering, well, um, I guess I'm not gonna mention the ordering. You can try to figure out the ordering here. Next up is Larry Lesser from the University of Texas, El Paso. Thanks, Alan. And UTEP is, it's an uh, open access majority Latinx university and so that, combined with my writing on diversity and social justice and bilingual learners may, may have biased me to observe happily that this year's USCOTS had much inclusion of inclusion. But to check myself, I scanned all nine USCOTS and did this quick rough tally of breakouts and keynotes that I felt had explicit DEI focus. As you see, this year's USCOTS topped the eight prior ones combined. Now, I didn't do another count, but I also bet the number of major session speakers this year from historically underrepresented groups exceeds any prior USCOTS. And I appreciate that underrepresented students are a focus of two of the bullet points for the theme chosen by this year's awesome co-chairs. So my hope and my charge for the future is that no matter who chairs our meetings, that we maintain across the program this spirit of inclusion and expanding opportunities regardless of the official theme. Also, I wish all of us courage to integrate into our professional and personal lives more of this sensibility, which our data feminism speakers wisely remind us is an ongoing process. So be gentle with yourself and with others. And read Jeff Whitmer's editorial too. <laughs> and, and while this is serious work, this tikkun olam, us Kots shows that we can and should also have joy and playfulness. So I'll close with my DEI stats joke. Why did the statistician hesitate to apply the square root transformation to the data on annual hate crimes? She didn't want bigotry to be normalized. Thank you. 
Thanks very much, Larry. Our next speaker is Megan Mocko from the University of Florida. Hello, everyone. One of the themes that resonated with me this week was the theme of being human. And I questioned even my own humanity when I tried to download this picture from Pixabay and I was told that I was a robot and not able to download the picture at first. So I thought I really need to expand on this idea of what is it to be human? What does it mean? Well, one of the ways it makes us human is that we question. We heard questions like, who is missing? Why was this data collected? Several times during the conference, I also heard fellow participants ask one of my presenters a question that had been circling around in their heads for a few months about how to teach a particular topic. First, I was gratified to hear that I wasn't the only one who had these types of questions, but also that these types of questions in this community allows for growth. It is growth that makes us human, this capacity to move past the status quo to a state of more, to expand opportunities for all. We also are becoming more and leaving behind the current status quo. We need this community to help us question what is considered best now to continue to move the field forward so that we find out what is best in the future. We also need to grow our community in our search for more so that we can embrace variability, of course, not just in our data, which we already do, but also in our students and in our community as well. Thanks very much, Megan. Next up is Sharon Lane Gataz from St. Olaf College. Thanks, Alan, and thanks, Kelly. You two are fabulous. Um, so I, I think of myself as many things, you know, BIPOC, non cisgender, a dyke, whatever, um, but also as a stats teacher, and it's what I really like doing. I rarely get to come to us Cox because I'm teaching. Um, and um, so this was wonderful for me to be able to participate. Um, I just couldn't believe how fabulous it was. It feels a little bit like coming home. I have a lot of people that I've interacted with in my past who hang around in the gathered hallways and such. And so that's been a pleasure. Um, but what I took away most was, um, or what I feel like most had an impact on my, my thoughts as I, as I end this conference time was the data feminism talk. I'm telling you, uh, it was like a refreshing glass of cold water. Um, people are talking about things that I think about all the time. Um, and I'm sort of an old school dyke. So, you know, they were talking about people I've heard of and, and ideas that I live by. And I just don't expect that to come into my stats life. I'm being my stats teacher self now, right? And it's like, oh, other parts of my life are, are creeping in. Wonderful. I get to be all of myself. This is wonderful. Um, one of the things that always bugs me though, and I try to be all of myself in my classroom for my students, um, they seem to appreciate that. Um, but I oftentimes, I struggle with how do I bring the guys along? I want them to know you're my buddy too, right? Um, just because I am who I am doesn't mean I don't love you. And, uh, and many of them get it. But there's still a few who I think are a little bit uncomfortable because, you know, it feels like, you know, my world is including a lot more people than the world that they're used to. Um, and I love this quote that was, that was shared in that talk that there are very few pure victims and there are very few pure oppressors. And I'm gonna use that quote um, in my syllabus um, where I talk about equity inclusion. So I'm wondering if you feel like me, if you're also called to make st statistics accessible to this more diverse audience that we want to attract to our classroom. And there were so many talks that spoke to that in very different ways. Um, you know, use less algebra. You know, some people really can understand the picture that will get across the point, um, but might not be as comfortable with the formula. Um, you know, the lock, lock, locks, uh, chatted about that. Um, challenge assumptions about uh, data collection or the lack thereof on topics that you're interested in. Again, data feminism hit that point. Um, and constantly this, this, this constant process of unveiling our own bias, right? Um, it's a challenge um, to try to live that way. Um, and I think that that's, that's something that we also do when 
we're teaching, that we have some biases because, you know, most of us were math majors a long time ago and we kind of like the math. We kind of like the formulas. We kind of like understanding the, the formula underneath of the computer program. And maybe that's not the most important thing. Maybe less is more. Um, and maybe we really need to start to think more like data scientists, right? They'll visualize more and model less. Um, and if I, um, and if I, and I've always been my bias, so I'll just admit that, but, <laughs> but, um, but now that data science is creeping up on us, um, maybe we could embrace that as well. Anyway, this has been a great conference and I'm so glad to be able to be a part of it this year. Um, thanks to everybody. Thanks very much, Sharon. Next up is Todd Iverson from Winona State University. Yes, I'll pick up where Sharon left off. I like thinking about data science. And the thing that gets me out of bed in the morning is teaching my students to program. I love R, I love Python. Um, but Dr. Nugent's uh, talk had a table that I, I'm playing on here um, from a report. You can look up the reference there. And in some of her TED Talks, she's talked about how data science is for everyone. And I get a little nervous when we make data science and statistics intro courses that rely heavily on programming, because programming can be a barrier. And I don't think we should lock away the beauty of data from people when we don't necessarily need to. It's only the largest data sets and the most cutting edge techniques that really require programming. Um, so in the same way that Jessica Utz used to dream of an intro stats book without a formula, I dream of an intro data science book that has zero lines of code. Thanks very much, Todd. Thanks to all of you for your, your thought-provoking reflections on the last four days here. Much appreciated. Next, it's my privilege to introduce to you once again, Kelly McConville. You've certainly met Kelly this week if you hadn't already known her. It's been my great privilege and pleasure to work closely with Kelly over the past especially six, eight months or so on planning this conference. And Kelly will, will now make some remarks here at the conclusion. Great, thanks, Alan. Likewise, also been my extreme pleasure to, to work with you. Um, and I just wanna say a huge thanks to everyone who's here for your wonderful engagement. Um, this is my third conference of June and the first two that I went to, most people kept their videos off. They didn't say much in the chat. It was like pulling teeth to get them to ask questions during the Q&A. And man, <laughs> did I feel like I was sitting in a room by myself, which I guess I was. Um, but you all just absolutely exceeded our expectations in terms of your engagement. And all facets of the conference from the keynotes to the poster sessions and everything in between. So thank you so much for that. Um, it really made all of our work worthwhile to me to have you be this engaged. And, and, I, and I got to meet a lot of you that I had not met before and that was wonderful. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, the other thing I wanna make sure I note at this point is that the feedback survey should be in your inboxes now. Uh, please fill that out. Give us feedback. We will use that for, for future US COTS. Um, we'll give the feedback you give us also for, for the ECOTS um, because we do want to make, make things better. We want to know what you like. We want to know what you didn't like um, so that we can continue to improve this experience for everyone. Okay, so as promised, we do have a few more polls before a couple announcements. Uh, so Bob, can you pull up this poll, what alphabetical ordering algorithm does Alan advocate for sessions with multiple speakers? All right, I'm gonna end the poll and share the results. You're right, I think half the reason Alan asked me to be a program chair with him is because Kelly does not start with an A, B, or something that would somehow beat an A, L. <laughs> All right. Next poll. What is the name of the social space in Gather? All right, let's end this poll. Okay, good work. 
definitely was the X bar. We might have said that more than <laughs> once or twice. All right. And then I think this is our last poll. Maybe one of the most important. Who is the behind the scenes US Cats MVP? Give you just two more seconds here. All right, let's share those results. Good work. And so this is really a moment where please folks, you know, type in chat, dance in your living room, even though we can't see you to say thank you to Bob because, because he's behind the scenes, right? You just don't know how much work he did. <laughs> but I'm telling you, Bob met with us definitely outside of the usual nine to five many a time. So thank you, Bob. Things ran so seamlessly and wonderfully because of you. And you made a beautiful gather space for us. So thank you so very much. Okay, I'm gonna hand this over to Kelly and Amy to talk about the social media winners. Yay, so uh, here are our, most of our social media winners. Um, as a reminder, uh, we had five copies of each of the books that our reading groups were reading uh, leading up to uh, uh, US COTS. So um, if your name is here, we will, I'm gonna be sending Bob a thing to tweet out uh, and we will get in touch with you to see which title you prefer. We'll have some ordering. I'm gonna make Kelly M in charge of that. Um, <laughs> so yes, uh, thank you so much for participating. It was great to be able to attend sessions that I wasn't able to go to virtually by just following the hashtag. Um, and I think I'll hand it off to Amy. Yeah, and we want to give a, a special win to uh, Liz Stats, who not only had the tweet with the most likes, which was a practical tweet, uh, but in my opinion, also the cutest with uh, the two pups, unfortunately, uh, one of which is has had to cut off in the in the Twitter algorithm. But uh, thank you, everybody, to use the who use the uh, us cats 21 hashtag. And also, apparently, I had the most tweets with that hashtag. So probably thanks to all of my followers who put up with all the us cats tweets. Um, but we can continue again with the uh, Slack and Twitter after keeping connected. Thank you. And I do just want to circle back with another thank you to our sponsors. And also a huge thank you to Dennis, the director of Cause. Again, without Dennis Pearl's huge support for this conference and all the other great Cause initiatives, things like this wouldn't be happening. So thank you, sponsors. Thank you for Dennis for helping to make this happen, and in particular for helping to make Cause not a barrier to inclusion in this conference. All right, Megan, you want to report about what's going to be happening next year? Yes, it's so exciting as it's sad that us COTS is coming to an end. There's something now on the horizon. ECOTS 2022 will be here next year in May. Uh, the theme will be preparing the modern student. And as you envision that modern student, make sure that you're envisioning the diverse students that we have now expanded our opportunities for, and now we are preparing them for their great futures. I also want to talk about some of the ECOTS benefits. So you may not be aware, but ECOTS is electronic conference. So there's no travel, no jet lag, you don't have to pack. And this time we were actually able to arrange to have the same great food as us COTS 2021. We're not able to do that every year, but we're able to do that this time. We have great discussion and great community. And I encourage you to bring your friends, bring the individual who you talk about stats down the hall, and of course, bring your cats and dogs because they're welcome. And perhaps I should have said rabbits, and maybe llamas too. So put it on your calendars, May 23rd through 26th, preparing the modern student. I hope to see you there. Great, that sounds very exciting. Can't wait. 
All right. And another event that's much closer on the horizon is the research satellite coming up on July 6th. So early next week, Bob is going to throw into the chat um, the page on cause with the information about it and also the link to sign up if you'd like to be involved in that um, satellite event. Great. Well, then I'm going to wrap wrap up now by saying we look forward to seeing you in 2023 in person where we'll see, um, but in person, we can't wait to see, see you all and have another wonderful uh, conference experience. Thanks so much for coming. Hey, guess what? The X bar is open. It's happy hour somewhere, I guess here with us now. Um, so why don't you head over to the X bar and gather, say, say your goodbyes before you not hop on a plane, make your supper um, to the new friends and old friends that you've seen at the conference this week. Thank you so much to everyone.